Hey there, Crystal Covington, founder of Women of Denver, here featuring one of our members. Her name is attorney Anna Burr. I've known her for years now, and she is a really delightful person to know, but also works in the legal system. So I love to learn a little bit more. She's doing some very different things than some of the other members that we featured. So I'm excited to share some of her journey of getting to where she is and talking a little bit about what's going on in her world. So Anna, it's nice to chat with you. Thank you so much for having me. Nice. So tell me a little bit about first off how you got to this point, because I'm sure there's people that are like, how do you get to, you know, doing what you do and how you chose your specialty as well, because uh, people in the legal field can be doing so many different things. Sure. So, I mean, I think a lot of lawyers, especially trial lawyers, go into the field out of a genuine desire to help people who have a need. Um, that's combined with people who are more linear thinkers and appreciate the strategy and, and have a, a real respect for the law. And so it's a good way to meld those two desires together to be able to offer a service to people. Yeah. And tell people a little bit about, you know, your specific specialty and what went into your decision of doing that. Of course. So I practice in personal injury. Um, so I help people who have been hurt. Um, it can be in a car accident. It could be in a slip and fall, something like that. It, it's an injury that occurs by somebody else's negligence. And so I got into that because I also kind of find the medicine interesting. I'm, I'm not cut out for medical school or anything like that. I'm too squeamish. Um, but, to, but to be able to, to take a person's injury and kind of figure out what's going on there is interesting and fun for me. And then there are just so many different complicated pieces that come together at the same time with several different types of insurance and what's happening in the court systems. And so um, being able to break that down and explain it and then walk somebody through the whole process and get them from a point of uncertainty and confusion to a point of healing and resolution is really gratifying. Yeah, I love how you talked about it as healing and resolution. Those are great words. My, um, my spouse actually works on part of the other side of what you do. So after the case is won and they have the opportunity to receive some sort of payment or settlement, they're able to um, you know, find resolution in that and use that opportunity to take care of themselves. It's like, once I understood more of what he was doing at first, I was like, oh, you just deal with financial stuff, you know, and that, but when he talks about the business that he's in, he's like, we're helping people. These are people who have been through something. I mean, this is traumatic. They've been through trauma. They've been through, you know, turmoil. They've lost careers because they can't work and things like that. And there are you know, now they're able to take what they've, um, what they've received from that to try to rebuild after having gone through something that is really tough and having to, you know, cope with a whole different life. Absolutely. And for people who've sustained catastrophic injury, you really need to stretch that settlement as much as possible to be able to cover long-term care or things that, that may not be coming for another 10, 15 years down the road, but now you have the money. And so how do we make that work for itself for the rest of your life. Yeah. yeah. So tell me what's new and going on in your industry. What does, you know, do you go to work? Do people still have court? <laughs> so <laughs> court, yeah, there, I, a lot of attorneys, myself included, have, have shifted um, to a very remote model, which is awesome because we can still provide services especially to people who are maybe more um, vulnerable in, in this new COVID world that we live in, but to be able to have a face-to-face -face conversation, using technology to really to advance the practice more than some stodgy old law firms have been willing to do in the last couple of years. And the courts are gradually starting to reopen. And so people may start to see, especially in Denver, jury summonses in their inboxes. The courts are doing a whole lot of things uh, to keep people safe when they bring everybody into the courtroom. So it's nice to be able to finally be moving that legal process forward. So many people have been waiting for months and months and now, now it's time again, it feels like. Yeah, I've heard the same when it comes to some of the health stuff that people have had to, you know, hold off and now they get to do it. So it's like everything that was on hold is now being taken care of now. So you're probably really busy. 
Yes, yes, we are keeping very busy. So, and in addition to the injury, I'm starting to expand my practice into estate planning, um, which kind of works also alongside the work that your husband does when a settlement comes in, or I mean, really for anybody um, who has not already thought about what's going to happen with their assets. Um, it's important to do that now while you know everybody's healthy and happy and able to have that conversation instead of finding yourself in a really unfortunate situation and, and nobody knows what we're going to be dealing with. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, okay, that's, a, that's another good place to be. Wow, great. <laughs> um, so what's one of your top recent accomplishments that you'd love to share? So um, this year I was nominated as a, uh, well, I received the award as a, a Super Lawyers Rising Star. So there, I mean, there are tons of lawyer awards. A lot of them are pay to play. Like here, send us a $300 check and we'll send you a plaque. It's like, oh, that's not really an award. Um, but Super Lawyers is an actual peer reviewed, like it's, it's a legitimate award that you don't buy. Uh, and the rising star goes to the top one and a half percent for um, attorneys who are under 40. My dogs are fighting. Um, so to have received that um, award is a, is a really high honor. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. You're an award-winning attorney. Yay! Yes. <laughs> so awesome. So one of the things I also wanted to kind of mention is, so we we've both been through like we're going through you know a political season and going through political training was one of the ways was the way that we met so we met through political training so it's very interesting to kind of watch all of my all of the women in my cohort going and doing really amazing things and having that knowledge behind us i want it i know i didn't i didn't prep you for this question but i just was thinking about it you know how does that political training and the things that you learned about you know, impact the way that you approach your career and the things that you're doing? Does it have any impact in your day to day? I know that, you know, whether or not we ever do run ourselves, it impacts the way that we kind of think about the, the things that um, we're doing and how we um, promote things to other people or share things with other people too. So, um, let me try and think. So I, I think the biggest thing that has, come for me out of that is the work that I do now is helping people really one at a time. I have a client, something has happened to them. I lead them through the legal process, but having gone through the training that we've gone through, I've been looking more broadly at how I can use my legal skills and that training to impact more people at once. And so I'm still in the beginning stages of it, but the Colorado Trial Lawyers Association, which I'm a member of, also has um, an arm that works directly with the state legislature mm -hmm. to identify shortfalls in the law, ways that other industries have rigged the system, I guess I'll say, um, you know, by, by fighting for laws and, and certain things that really make it more difficult for individuals who are seeking justice through the court system. And so to be involved with them, sorry. <laughs> this is our Zoom world. <laughs> yes, my, my dog wants to participate. Um, so to get more involved with them and work on a, on a higher legislative level about how do we even things out and how do we make this more balanced for individuals who are seeking justice um, in addition to the benefits that the insurance industry already has. Awesome. Yeah, I wanted to make mention because it's like this is a great opportunity to share that and say, you know, for all of the women watching, being attentive to what's going on in politics matters, being a part of it matters so that our voices are heard. That was the biggest lesson that I learned is that the more we participate, the more people like us are making decisions for us. And so that is an essential, um, something that really essentially matters a lot to me. And I've spent, now I spend money towards, I know how much it costs to run for office. So when you see really great people, women that are running, anybody, pe any people that are running that, you know, care about the things that matter to us as women to, you know, looking at all the populations and making sure that they're supporting and 
um, navigating community issues well. Give them your funds so that they yes. can, you know, run for office and be a part of volunteering and helping and making calls and all of that. So yes, yes, and a lot of I have been volunteering with some local campaigns. Local campaigns are so important. Yes. Um, and for people who are hesitant about knocking doors, making phone calls, calling people, in the COVID world, a lot of campaigns are allowing you to do just a lit drop, so you don't have to talk to anybody. They just give oh. you a stack of lit. <laughs> You just drop it at the door and go to the next one. It's fantastic. So a good way to get involved if people are uncomfortable um, with speaking directly to the voters. Good tip, because I'm, I'm making calls this season and I'm kind of like, oh, it's going to be awkward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, thanks for spending the time to chat with me this morning, Anna. I really appreciate your time and say hello to the doggies. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much again for having me, Crystal. Have a good one. You too.